Hello and welcome to the 10th video that I'll be posting on my Java tutorial series. And in today's video, we are going to talk about sorting algorithms. Specifically, I am going to be discussing bubble sort because bubble sort is the most fundamental and useful sorting algorithm out there. And with that said, let's start today's video by opening up our Visual Studio code. And just like always, click on the new file and name it bubble sort.java. And just as always, we can type in the public class bubble sort. And in line two, we can type in our usual code to allow the set program to run, which is public static void main string args. And since we are going to be sorting an array, I firstly need to create an array and I'm going to make an integer array and I'm going to name this array is equal to new int and the length of the array will be 15. And I'm going to predefine the values just like always where we are going to say array index 0 is equal to 3, array index 1 is equal to 44. And of course, remember that since this algorithm will sort it out, so you can have, you know, numbers that are less or even larger and in any random order. Array 3 is 5, and this might take a while, so I'm going to speed things up. And there we go. We have a random generated number and order, as you can see here. And for this video specifically, I've already found a website that actually can illustrate bubble sort easily. And this website is called visualgo.net. And I've put a link in the description of the video just for you to discover this right here. And what it does is it illustrates how we do the sorting. And specifically, I've already predefined the array value to match this right here. And if we click on the sort right now, we can see a somewhat logic here, but it's not necessarily the code. It is just to help us visualize how it will look like. And yeah, this is how, you know, bubble sort functions. It checks the value next to it. And if it's larger, it just swaps places. As you can see here, 2 and 44, they swap places, 4 and 46, swap places. And yeah, and they keep on repeating this swapping position until all of the array is sorted. And as you can see, 3 and 5, the value 3 is less than 5, so they don't really swap. But if it's a value that's smaller, we just swap it. As you can see here, 26 and 2 will be swapped, and 27 and 4 will be swapped. And that's because they are smaller values. And this just repeats until all of it is yellow like this, where it's already sorted out. And there we go. We have a sorted array. And this will be our version of this after we, of course, use the bubble sort algorithm. And the first thing that we are going to do whenever making the bubble sort algorithm is we need a for loop, of course. So let me just comment this and type in the bubble sort algorithm. So we have an integer hold num, and this is what I usually use to actually hold the number. And you'll see why we need a hold num integer. And this really comes in handy in almost all situations in sorting, because you need to, you know, in this case, in the bubble sort, we need to swap positions, meaning that we need to change the position. And we can only do that using the hold num. And 
this is how bubble sort will look like. We have a for loop and we have a for int i equals to zero, i is less than array dot length, then i plus plus, and then we have a for int i2 is equal to zero, i2 is less than array dot length, i2 plus plus, and this is our usual for loop. Now, inside of bubble sort, the unique thing is instead of using zero here, we can use one right there. And then we can type in the code here. If, you know, our array i2 minus one is greater than array i2, then we need to swap positions. So we need to store the value of i2 minus one. And then we simply just want to store i2 minus 1 position with the value array i2. But array i2 needs to swap, which is why we just use hold num once more. And let me just click on run right now. After I type in the printed out library version, import java.util dot asterisk and that is for importing everything and we can type in array dot two string arrays array and if we click on run right now we can see that the we can see that the value is already sorted out and this is of course after we already, you know, sort it out and undergo the algorithm for the bubble sort. But before that, we can print out again. As you can see here, this is the original value before and this is after the bubble sort algorithm, which means that the bubble sort algorithm actually functions. And you might be wondering, what is this again? Well, I'll explain to you right now. We have the hold num value and this integer hold num is really useful whenever we want to sort. So keep in mind that we will use this in future episodes, integer hold num. And this variable right here will only be used just to store a value, hold it, and then we can just replace a value using that value, as you can see in here, but I'll get to that later. So the first thing that we are going to do in the bubble sort is we're going to have a for loop. And the first for loop is there to ensure that we can run all of this multiple times. As you can see here, if we click on the run right now, we can see that it sorts everything, but this is just the first sequence. We need to sort it multiple times, which is why we use a for loop in the beginning and another for loop. Okay, because as you can see here, it doesn't just go, you know, one path. It needs to undergo this checking from left to right multiple times, which is why we use the for loop. This for loop right here. And the second for loop, which is this, is used to essentially be able to start from a value and check the value after it. And this can be done by, you know, starting i2 is equals to one and i2 is always less than array dot length. So we don't exceed the array boundaries. And the unique thing is since it starts from one or is equals to one, we can say i2 minus one and then we can compare it with i2. And logically what happens here is that i2 minus one, which is in the first index, which is one, makes it array zero and array one, as you can see, they compare the value from the previous value and the after value, which is array zero and array one. And if the I two is two, then we compare array one and array two. And as you can see, this is all possible because of the I two minus one, where this value will always be less than this value or less by one index than this. And that really helps us be able to compare two values from the same array. As you can see here, 1927, which is 
index before and index after. And that is all possible thanks to d minus 1 here. And then, if inside of this, of course, if the value before it is larger than the value after it, like 15 and 4, then we simply need to store the value of array i2 minus 1, which is 15. And then we put the position 15 to be 4. And we put the 4 position or the index right here to be 15. Because, as you can see here, array i2 minus 1 is equals to array i2, which means that we overwrite the 15 value right here with 4. And then we overwrite the 4 value with the hold num. And the hold num is originally 15. And as you can see here, this is the use of the hold num right here, which is to hold the original value of 15 or any number we want to swap. And then as you can see here in line 29, that value is overridden, which means that we cannot access the previous value, which is why we store it inside of a variable first, and then we override it, and then we can refer to the variable whenever we want to swap. And that's just how you do it in Java and programming, where we need to place the value first, and then override, and then place the value again using the variable. And yeah, you get it. It's just impossible to do it without the hold num variable. And then as you can see here, it swaps places. And this is pretty much the algorithm of bubble sort. And if you're wondering right here, what happens if I were to change this symbol from less than to more than to more, then as you can see here, the sort switches from, you know, small to largest to largest to smallest. And this is because of if array i2 minus 1 is smaller than array i2, then we want the largest one to be in the front, which is why we get largest to smallest. But if we were to flip this again back to array i2 minus 1 is more than array i2, then we get smallest to largest. And that's really easy to be flexible with when it comes to bubble sort. And that's one of the advantages. And although this right here is already the bubble sort algorithm, there is also a way to make it much more effective. And that is through the use of a while loop and how we can terminate it earlier, especially when all of the data is already, you know, sorted out. As you can see from here, the data isn't really in best case, but if it's, for instance, already sorted out in the first place, then we can easily terminate it quickly through the use of this effective bubble sort. As you can see here, there is a lot of operations that need to be looped. And in this case, of course, this algorithm right here doesn't stop. If it's already, you know, sorted like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this algorithm will still search it one by one. Meanwhile, the effective bubble sort should stop it whenever it's already sorted out. So we want to just maximize the efficiency of the algorithm. And the logic of the effective bubble sort is not that different, as you know. We need to type in our hold num again. And actually, I am just going to comment this because I want to make it as similar as the normal bubble sort so you can see the differences. So I'm just going to comment that in the hold num. And then inside of this, we are going to have a Boolean. And I'm going to name this swap is equal to true. And then we're going to type in while swap is equal to true. We are going to directly set it to false so that there is no infinite loop. And then we're going to type in d4 int i2 is equal to 0. i2 is less than array.length. And then i2 plus plus. 
And just like before, we need to make use of i2 is equal to 1. And then if array i2 minus 1 is greater than array i2, then we simply just need to set hold num is equal to array i2 minus 1. And that's just like before. Array i2 minus 1 is equal to array i2 where we will override the array i2 negative 1 or minus 1 with the value and then we just need to override the value or array i2 with the variable again that stores the original value of array i2 minus 1 and then we just need to set swap equal to true again which allows this while swap right here to activate once more and if i were to copy and paste this code right here to print out again we can see that the array is also sorted which means that this effective bubble sort actually functions and now let me explain what is happening as usual we need a hold num and and then we have the boolean swap and this boolean swap here is to trigger the while loop so as you can see here swap is originally set to true meaning that the while loop will run and then the unique thing is at 43 swap is directly set to false which means that the while loop will not trigger forever however remember that inside of a bubble sort we need to essentially trigger it multiple times if the data is not you know sorted like this as you can see here runs once runs twice and then it gets sorted which means that it doesn't run only once which is why we set a swap to true here in line 49 and in the line 44 we have the usual for loop for int i2 equals to 1 i2 is less than array dot length i2 plus plus and this is just the same code for this right here so basically, this will run, and then if array i2 is larger than array i2, then we just need to swap the places, and that can be done by using hold num is equals to array i2 minus 1, which stores the original value of array i2 minus 1, and then array i2 minus 1 is overridden with array i2, but since we don't want multiple values, we need to overwrite array i2, with the original value of array i2 minus 1, which is luckily hold by the variable hold num. And then we just need to equal that to hold num, which overrides array i2 value with array i2 minus 1 value. And from there, we get the swap action. And then since we already swap, we need to set the swap equals to true just in case. And as you can see here, this code right here is pretty much similar or is exactly the same thing with this and the only main difference is that we use swap is equals to true and if you actually notice this right here the only difference between the bubble sort and the effective bubble sort is the for loop in the bubble sort we use the for loop but in the effective bubble sort which is still pretty much the same as bubble sort but just a better version because it is much more effective we can see that essentially inside of the effective bubble sort the for loop is replaced with the while loop and the while loop makes use of the swap and as you can see here if for instance the for loop here shows that array i2 minus 1 is always less than array i2 then swap will be false because there is no value that overrides the swap equals to false basically there's no swap is equal to true in this right here if the if statement does not trigger meaning that the while loop will terminate so that if the value is directly sorted like this then as you can see the while loop or the bubble sort will directly terminate after going you know one check meanwhile the bubble sort does not the bubble sort will directly loop it multiple times, multiple times, multiple times, multiple times until, you know, it does every check. But then 
even though it's already sorted, it still does every check. So it doesn't really care whether it's sorted or not for bubble sort. But effective bubble sort cares for that, which is why it terminates earlier or stops running earlier. And since it stopped running earlier, there is much more processing power saved. And that's essentially it for bubble sort. And yeah, that is it for bubble sort algorithm. Also, don't forget that we can create methods for this, for both of these algorithms. And this can be done by, you know, typing in our usual code, which is the static. And since we want to return a sorted array, we just need to simply type in int, and then we have the square brackets indicating an integer array. And then we're just gonna name this bubble sort. And inside the bubble sort, of course, we need to, you know, have a parameter for the array sorted. And yeah, we're just going to copy this right here. And instead of array sorted, let me just name this array. And then we are just going to paste this right here. And oh, wait, give me a second. Let me just do this. There we go. And then we're just going to return that array. And then let us use the method to actually, you know, sort the array. Let me just type in bubble sort. And then we are just going to type in the array. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Array and then just send me colon. And since this is, you know, a method that returns a value, we need to either store it or print it out. So let me just directly print it out. It's now dot print line. Array to string and semicolon semicolon. And if we click on run right here, give me a second, I need to check why this is an error. The static code here is supposed to be inside. There we go. So now if we click on run right here, as you can see, we have a functioning method. So pause the video right now and try to do the effective bubble sort and turn it into a method. And to maximize the understanding, try to not look at the previous code that you've written. So try to pause the video right now and try to do and create the method. Okay, so for those of you who succeeded it, nice job. But for those of you who don't know how to do it, it's fine. Because after all, this is a learning process. And yeah, it's still fine to make mistakes. So let me just type it down here. Static int. And we have the integer array that we want to return and we are just going to name this bubble sort effective then int array and then inside of it we are just going to type in our usual hold num and then for swapping we just need to type in boolean swap is equal to true and then while swap is equal to true then we need to set swap to false because we don't want it to run infinitely. And then we're just going to type in 4. And i2 is equal to 1. i2 is less than array.length. As it should be. And i2 plus plus. And if, you know, array. Sorry, I mistyped that. If array i2 minus 1 is greater than array i2. Then swap is set to true, but before that, we need to make sure that we store the value or the original value of array i2 minus 1. And then we are going to swap array i2 minus 1 with array i2. And array i2 is equal to hold num. And then, since this is a method that actually needs to return a value, we are just going to return that array after 
it undergoes all of the manipulation. And if I were to copy and paste this, actually, let me just change this name to bubble sort effective. That way we are actually referring to this method. Click on run. And as we can see, the method is functioning as well. So yeah, I think that is all I've discussed about bubble sort and the effective version as well as the normal version. And yeah, I also like to point out that the effective version is just much better to write. So every time I'm discussing this, try and use the effective version of bubble sort because it is much better, especially when you want to save time. But if you are in a rush, then you can use the normal bubble sort. And at the end of the day, it depends on what you are trying to create. So yeah. Anyway, I think that sums up today's video. Thank you for watching. And I hope I've given you a much more in-depth look at Java as well as actually being able to do Java programming because I think this marks the end of this tutorial series because I've covered the basics. And of course, I will still be able to edit and add more videos in the tutorial playlist. But for now, this marks the end of the playlist because I've discussed about the basics as well as sorting and searching in arrays. And of course, there are still more advanced Java topics that I can cover. But for now, this marks the end of the basic tutorial. And of course, as you can see from the visualgo.net, there is still other forms of sorting, but more or less the bubble sort itself can already cover the basics of the sorting in array. And in my opinion, of course, this bubble sort right here is the easiest and the most functional one out of all of them because of how easy you can write it down and how easy you can manipulate it inside of the arrays. So yeah, that marks the end of today's video and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.